Hello, everybody. I'm Ricky Smith, and this is Faith on Friday Presents. At Faith on Friday Presents, we're all about highlighting inspiring people, engaging topics, and small businesses that need to be highlighted. And don't forget, while you're here, like, subscribe, and share this content with your network. And make sure to like our Facebook page and follow us on Instagram. You don't want to miss a thing. Okay, everybody. So it is a hot topic, and it has been for a while. There are people struggling with it day to day in their personal lives, in their professional lives, in their families. There are people sitting next to you that you may not even know that they're struggling. What are we talking about? Well, it's mental health. That's right. We've all had some form or something of it one way or another. But who do you ask? What can you need to what is it that you need to know? So today, that's what we're going to talk about. Y'all, let me introduce you to somebody who's going to give us everything. And I do mean everything all about mental health. Everybody, please say hello to Dr. Keith McNally. Hey, Dr. Keith, how are you? Smith, it's really good to be here. I'm doing pretty good for today. To hey, today is all you get, sir. So let's make the best of it, shall we? <laughs> we shall. We shall. Okay. First of all, Dr. Keith, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for being willing to talk about a subject that has been stigmatized for years and years and years. But we're going to get into that. But right now, tell us a little bit about you and where you are, sir. Well, geographically speaking, I'm here in Virginia and where I am in life is on a journey. And so lots of good things are going on. Uh, as you said, I am a doctor. So I've been a doctor since 2010. I'm a doctor of education. I have spent some time in the world of mental health. And so as a mental health provider in North Carolina, uh, I've been in the college classroom. I've been a professor for many, many years, and I'm really focused on teaching IT. But my life has changed drastically in the last couple of years because of the very thing that you want to talk about mental health, and maybe specifically my mental health. And so if we can kind of give your listeners and uh, your audience a, a quick backstory, can we? Mm -hmm. Yes, please do. I took two attempts against my life since 2013. So in 2013 and 2021, uh, post-COVID, um, made two suicide attempts. And so plus, you know, to add insult to injury, probably, uh, had a heart attack in 2022 so october of 2022 so not only my 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 mental health if you want to call it that my mental well-being um i was physically challenged for a while so i had to make some really drastic changes to everything that you see in front of you and so i'm a completely different person through the evolution of time as i sit here today wow already there's so much to unpack first things first I'm so glad to see you. I'm so happy that you are here because with what you've gone through, this conversation was definitely not supposed to happen. But here you are and you are looking good, sir. So that being said, let's talk about the mental health part. Because like you said, this is not just something you know, you study, you've actually experienced it. So can we go back a little bit before the, the suicide attempts? What was going on in your life, if you're willing to share that with us? So just for clarity's sake, uh, there's when we talk about mental health or mental well-being, even in the scope of mental illness, big, broad umbrella. And so we need to narrow that down to, you know, what happens in life that causes somebody to feel not so comfortable, not so engaged, isolated, afraid, and scared. And I don't have a, you know, just for clarity, I don't have a mental illness. I don't have a diagnosis. Like I'm not diagnosed with depression or anxiety or anything like that. Um, for the most part, I grew up rather normally. So if you want right. to call it that, whatever but, that is, <laughs> whatever that is, but Sometimes 
life throws a curveball. We get knocked down. We face challenges. And so significantly, I think I faced some real challenges in 2013 uh, mm -hmm. that my life imploded. And so when you don't have the resources, whether they be financial, social, um, familial, family, whatever that is, um, it's really difficult to see how things are going to get better. Mm -hmm. um, things did, um, but slowly but surely, I kind of climbed out of a very dark place. Mm -hmm. But in 2021, and I'm not blaming COVID, I'm blaming uh, another life circumstances, you know, other mm -hmm. life circumstances that kind of hit me in the face again, uh, but this time even harder. And so I seriously thought and tried, uh, you know, to take my own life. And so with that being the case, it's a very scary situation to be in. Um, mm -hmm. There are things that you think about that you probably shouldn't. Um, and then it's a very lonely and there are many, many days, many days yeah. uh, that I've cried in the closet. And so, and that's a guy, um, I'm 54 mm -hmm. now. So 21, you know, three years ago as the time of this recording, yeah. uh, you're talking about a grown man crying in the closet. Yeah. And so. But that's not a bad thing. I mean, you, you figure- thing. There are a lot of people who want to cry in the closet and who probably do, but for whatever reason, they don't share it with anybody. You know, they have to make it all look like it's okay. Because, you know, society says, if you don't doing this, looking like this, going these places, blah, 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 then something's wrong with you. Mm -hmm. So as you're, you're telling this, you know, you're really speaking to a lot of people. I mean, myself included. I mean, who who of among us really doesn't have dark days where the hole sometimes is so deep that it's hard to get out? And of course, those ideas, those thoughts, I like what you said, the thoughts you shouldn't be thinking, you know, come into your mind and then they get really big. So leading up to that, you know, not just the attempt in and of itself, but the darkness that you were in, you said, you was there no one that you could talk to that or you just did not want to or feel the need to reach out? What was your thinking at that time? So the first time, no. The first time it was just really scary, very lonely place. Um, you know, if we kind of were to go deeper and this conversation were longer, um, I would literally open up and say, I really felt to be, I was tortured by mm -hmm. spiritual entities, but sure. that's a different conversation altogether. Hey, but that's a good uh, conversation to have. We'll, we'll have to get into that later. Yeah. We would. But the second time uh, I did have an angel, uh, his name is Mitch Gray. I always do a shout out. Uh, mm -hmm. He was one person who invested his his time, his energy, basically his full self into making sure that I uh, did two things every day until I could kind of stand on my feet again. And that was breathe and get out of bed. And so he taught me the value of just showing up, even if it's for just yeah. five minutes and you could spend the rest of your day crying in the closet mm -hmm. as long as you show up for five minutes uh, with him, first of all, mm -hmm. and then with others kind of growing out of that space. And so I always say not everybody is mm -hmm. going to give you the time, but if there's at least one person uh, who knows you and will invest, you can make it through just about mm -hmm. anything. That That is absolutely so good. Here's my question though. How did he find you? Where did he know to look? Did you reach out to him? Answer all that at one time. Go. Yes, no, maybe. So <laughs> four. Um, Perfect. <laughs> we connected on LinkedIn uh, through what was called a quad meet at the time. This is many years back. Uh, we were on the same call. Uh, he kind of, you know, social networking kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And he mm -hmm. was a lot of things that I wanted to be. He was a pastor. He was, you know, a coach. He is a speaker and all those kind of cool things. And mm -hmm. here I was struggling just to stay alive. And I said, would you mentor me? Um, not even mm -hmm. going in the direction that this was something else was going on, mm -hmm. i.e. something else was going on. Um, and he just, out of the goodness of his heart, that's the kind of person that he is, Yeah. simply said yes. And they made the investment. That is so great because so many people will want to ask, but not sure. 
And and like you said, did you feel desperate that you're like, I'm just asking, I got nothing else to do. Is that why you asked him at that time? It was, I wanted to become something different. I was going through hell in a handbasket and mm -hmm. you just, when everything kind of implodes and life falls apart and it just says, I don't want to, I don't want to live anymore. Um, mm -hmm. And he said, your ass better show up. That's it. I love it. Snatch your butt up right now, brother. Get it together. Those yeah. two things that he told you to do show up and get out of bed that's well, breathe it breathe and Let's show up yeah breathe yeah breathe and show up i i think that is so good and so it sounds so simple was mm -hmm. it that easy at the time you know how hard it is to breathe when you're crying <laughs> it's mm -hmm. a very difficult thing because yes, I, I do yeah yeah <laughs> so it's a challenge and so once you kind of can kind of master that uh, you have to master breathing. You really have to focus and learn how to breathe it with intention. And I said, we typically take it for granted. We're both breathing now, thank goodness. Mm -hmm. uh, but to breathe in the sense that we want to learn to focus our energies, focus our mental status, focus our physical status. And you could do that through breathing. And then once you've kind of mastered that, and so that's a process. But once you are learning the process, you kind of are helping your subconscious gain clarity and focus and so all those dark thoughts kind of move away but not entirely because then you have to show up you actually have to engage with people yeah. uh, you actually have to do things even if it's just a simple thing like um you know writing something on a piece of paper engaging your brain uh mm. showing up and so there's a whole lot there mm -hmm. other conversation maybe other conversations plural but as long as you can master those two things, and yeah. I would say there's somebody holding your hand and there's somebody holding the flashlight because it's a really dark mm. place. Oh, wow. I like that. Holding your hand and holding the flashlight. Because, I mean, a lot of our viewers, you know, we've been they've been watching this for seven years. And thank you all so much. I appreciate you. You know, what they may not know is I was there for a lot of years and it was in that dark place that I found some of the most amazing people in my life and who said, Ricky, you can do this. One of them was my sister, who's probably watching this. And when I was going through my horrible time of depression, it was a lot of years ago, she would pinch me every day. She would, that was her thing. She would pinch me because she told me that if you can feel it, you're still alive. Sure, it sure, makes sure. me all the clamped right now because that, believe it or not, that part probably saved my life right. because I had stopped feeling. Were you there at that point as well at that time? You know, sometimes it's not wanting to die, but it's not wanting to live um, mm. because you find no value in who you are and what's going <laughs> on. Um, so maybe not in the same way, but mm -hmm. in the same sense. You know, even getting out yeah. of bed is is a challenge. It can be. It can be. So you got out of this hole. Yay. You're doing better. You're moving and shaking. And then you have a heart attack. <laughs> I mean, well, what else could go wrong? You know, wow. What happened there? What was going on in you that you, I mean, or were you jogging, walking, eating donuts? <laughs> Okay, well, look at me for one. Um, so mm. I'm a lot smaller than I was. And so I am wow. a amateur athlete. I always call myself because amateurs don't get paid for all the work that they do. Right. And I love staying in shape. I love exercising. And so my, used, my, when I was younger, I used to run. Uh, mm. But now I walk as, as an older man. But I'm mm. always hitting the weights. Uh, so I always try to stay in shape. But I like to strength train. And so my diet and my exercise were consuming a lot of calories, a lot of mm -hmm. carbohydrates, a lot of proteins. Right. Um, I was destroying my body from inside out. And so things, my kidneys were, were, were failing only because I was loving, eating a lot of milk products and whey and stuff like that. My blood pressure was going up. Uh, doctor said, we should probably put you on medication. Long story short, <laughs> my heart stopped and so on october 16th 2022 uh i 
cried again because it hurt so bad. Oh. So the chest, bam, oh. three o'clock in the morning. Uh, oh my you know, not thinking of what it possibly could be, but it's hurting really, really bad. Uh, mm -hmm. and now, I didn't know what to do. I was too scared. That sounds kind of mm -hmm. weird. Too scared to even, you know, call the ambulance and say, hey, come pick me up. Something's wrong. Mm -hmm. um, I did my normal routine, which was get up and walk. So, yeah, oh my God. I actually walked five miles um, with pain in my chest, as I typically would on, a, on an average typical morning. But by noontime, so nine hours after I was woken up by this extreme pain, uh, you know, I had my wife drive me to the hospital. <laughs> Okay, so to all the women, wives watching this, you we already know this, don't we? They ain't going to do right. They ain't going to do right. The arm That's could have fallen fair, off out of the bed. Fair or not, sir, you just proved our point. Thank you. <laughs> I'm so glad that you did that and, and told her and asked her to take her. Oh, my gosh. Well, so, I was told that the nurses told me later that if this ever happens again, dag on it, you call an ambulance because when you have a heart attack, quite literally every second counts. Um, yeah. So as you said earlier, with two suicide attempts and one heart attack, this conversation should not be happening, yeah. but it's happening for a reason. I agree. And the reason is, and I know this to be true because somebody needs to hear this. Somebody needs to see you. Somebody needs to know that life is yet worth living and it's still possible to be okay, even in and out of some of those dark places. That being said, so Keith, what are you telling people now about mental health and about physical health after all that you've gone through? I am having conversations almost every day. And so I talk with people from all over the world. I host four different types of podcasts. So we call them podcasts because that's what people recognize. Mm -hmm. uh, but I have conversations around people's personal stories, people's professional stories, stories of impact and social change, and then conversations, uh, which is a playlist on my YouTube channel that is really focused on building deeper relationships with people. And so the Question Guy podcast, Coach's Corner, and the Envision Speaker series are all the conversations that I have with people because mm -hmm. since 2021, since COVID, since the suicide attempt, my goal was to make every opportunity to have conversations, recorded or not, it doesn't make a difference, yeah. to just continually connect with people and I give them three words and then I give them another three words. So the first mm -hmm. three is you're important mm -hmm. and you have value and you have a purpose. So importance, value, and purpose. Mm -hmm. And then on the flip side of that, I provide help, hope, and healing. That's my other three words to people uh, who are really in need of that. And so yeah. my goal, I always say my goal is to have a million conversations before I actually do die. Don't know mm -hmm. if that will happen, but I'm going to make every effort to make attain. every effort to. Uh, wow. Keith, this is so incredibly powerful. And to those that are watching, watching and listening to this, I, I think that what you're doing is really helping. Because like I said, not everybody knows that it's okay not to be okay and that okay is still possible. So Keith, if somebody wanted to reach out to you or continue this conversation, where's the best place for them to find you? The best place is LinkedIn because that's where I'm making all my connections. That is my, that's my home away from home or my home in my own home. So yeah. I'm always on LinkedIn. I post just about every day. I engage with people. Again, that's where I'm going to find it. That's where I began finding the people of like-mindedness and I continue to do so. But envisionspeakers.com and so this is where i'm having those conversations of impact and change and specifically around uh suicide suicide education suicide prevention and suicide awareness uh although the impact and change is is broader than that uh we do a lot of conversations around what it means to be healthy and have good personal well-being yeah that that's so good don't worry everybody if you did not get any of that information it's all going to be in the description below. And again, don't forget to like and subscribe and share this YouTube channel, as well as like our Facebook page and follow us on Instagram. So Dr. Keith, my friend, 
before I let you go, we're going to have to play a game. Yay! <laughs> so this game is called This or That. It is so simple. I'm going to give you the choice of a couple things, and you just tell me which one you like the best. Are you ready to play, sir? Yes, ma'am. Let's do it. Let's do this. All right. Uh, where to begin? Oh, how about this? Work from home or go to the office? Work from home. Yeah, me too. Large crowds or small groups? Preferably small groups. Okay. Batman or Captain America? Oh, no. <laughs> Batman. There's no okay. option there. Yeah, that's exactly right. So you all may not know, but look behind him. Look at all the cool stuff. But there's a Batmobile. I'm super excited. All right. Read the book or see the movie? Oh, read the book. Okay. I like that. People are not reading anymore. They're missing some of the best stuff. Okay. House slippers or bare feet? Bare feet. Yellow light. Speed up or slow down? Stop. <laughs> slow down. <laughs> Why are we stopping at the yellow light? Because I know it's because it's a caution. It's caution, caution, caution. I'm an old man. So that's that's okay. I, I I'm not even going to mess with you about that. And fine, well, peanut butter creamy or crunchy? Oh no, it's crunchy. I got gallons of it downstairs. <laughs> you got to add the peanut. Got to add the peanuts to the peanut butter. <laughs> yes, because you know why else? And finally, sir, complete this sentence. I have way too many blank. Hmm. I have way too many things to do. That's for sure. Right? Oh my gosh. Do, are you a list person? Do you put everything in a list? I do. But then once it gets past 10, I throw it out and start all over. <laughs> and then I get <laughs> angry at myself because I forget what I needed to do. Wait, we can do that? We can throw the lists away? I can't I wait. Do. This is awesome. <laughs> well, see, I got one right here. It's got six things on it. I did three mm -hmm. today. I got three more to do. Once I do it, I'll throw it out. Oh, there you go. Take the win. Dr. Keith, thank you so much for joining me today. I appreciate your time and your candor. Thank you so much. Ricky. It's been a pleasure being here. I appreciate it. All right, everybody. That's it for this week. But we'll be back next week with more Faith on Friday Presents. Thank you.